Welcome to the homestead, everyone. We are excited to continue this series on our Victron system. This system powers our barn, this coop, the well house, our shop, and everything on this side of our property. Today, we're gonna to be talking about programming the system, and then we are going to be doing a big stress test, a load test, on this to see what it can handle. We've been up and running for about a week and it's performing amazing so far, so let's get into the programming. I'm specifically going to be showing you how to do this from a MacBook. We do use PCs in the house, but only for my drawing programs for architecture. Everything else we use a Mac, so that's what I have for this. And since we are out, on our property near our barn. We do not have a Wi-Fi connection out here. There is certainly no internet out to my barn. So what we need is this MK3 to USB device. We're gonna connect that USB end into our computer. Then we're gonna disconnect the VE bus connection from our main inverter and plug it into the end of this. Now let's bring you down onto the computer screen and show you what we're doing. The other way to connect to this, if you do not want to use this MK3 and connect directly with it, is via the VRM or Victron Remote Monitoring. And that gives you the ability, you still need the computer, but you don't need to just hard line it in. It's neither here nor there to me, but I need this because I don't have the internet connection. But anyway, let's show you this. Okay, we're gonna open up our Victron Connect app that we have. We just downloaded that from victronenergy.com. I'm gonna plug in that MK3 device so I can read the inverter. Let's plug it in there. It's gonna try to detect it. Here's the VRM if you need to use that, sign into VRM, but we're not on the internet right now. We're gonna refresh down here to look for new devices. And you can see our inverter just popped up here. You can expand this down and see some initial information right here about what's going on with the inverters. We've got our battery voltage. Actually, you can see the battery too, obviously. Battery voltage, the state of charge on the batteries, the current load, and that it is inverting. We're gonna click on our inverter. And there we go, we've connected to the inverter. We've got more information for that, these inverters. And you can see right now, we have zero AC in on this little diagram, and we have our AC out. On line two, which is where that air conditioning unit sits, we've got almost 500 watts because the compressor just kicked on. Line one, we've just got 13. And you can see down here, we're inverting and putting energy into the batteries. Let's go over here. On the right-hand side, you can see that our AC input is disconnected. That's because we do not have any. We do not want it on this off-grid system. So it'll show you the AC input on line one and line two, which is zero. Then we've got our inverters set at 120 volts each split phase and where the current draw is coming from, from the load. Then down at the bottom, you can see we've, we're reading our battery and I don't know why this won't scroll up anymore, but we can barely see the state of charge, 84%. Now that we can see just this information here, we wanna go into the settings for the inverters. So we're gonna click on this little gear here and the settings are currently disabled because this says features provided in this menu are powerful tools intended for use by Victron trained engineers, installers, and dealers. It is its usage must not be attempted by system owners and users. Unfortunately, if you're DIYing your own system, this CYA note from the lawyers says essentially that you can't touch it, touch it. But I think all of you are able to do it, but you might wanna consult with somebody if you're not comfortable doing this. So we're gonna enable the settings, but it asks for a password. Now that password is usually six zeros, or it is a password from your supplier of your Victron equipment. They have that password and they can give it to you minus something different. I'm gonna type that in, say okay. Now I can go into either my phase one or phase two. Now we're gonna to go to our first inverter here, phase one. We're gonna look at the general settings. Okay, this is where we can control everything. It's set at 60 hertz, which is correct. Our input current limit is 50 amps. I'm gonna leave it there. Current li limit overruled by remote. I don't have a remote set with this system, but we'll just leave that on. 
I don't have any external sensors and you always can click on more to see an example of what that might be and that is for a generator or some other input. I enabled our battery monitors. This was clicked off. So if you want to see, you can see over here on the left hand side that that dropped because it's not monitoring that battery through the inverter. We're going to close or turn it back on and you can see that it does monitor it in some way. Our battery capacity with both batteries is 200 amp hours, which is correct, and our state of charge is 85%. I'm going to go back from general. You can go to grid, but we don't have the grid enabled on this. So none of this is applicable to our off-grid system. You can play with this and uh, understand what you need for your particular system. Okay, we're going to go to the inverter. Our output voltage is 120 volts. Our ground relay here is turned on and it's not really necessary because I don't have AC in. We've got our DC input low shutdown set at 37. Our low restart is at 43. And our low state of charge shutdown is at 20 and a half percent. I actually messed that up. It should be 20%, but no big deal. And our restart is at 30%. So this AES is kind of like a soft start on your batteries. There's not, when a huge load kicks on, there's not a huge uh, jump in amperage draw from the batteries. I don't think that's a big deal with these Life Power 4 batteries. The power assist is automatically turned on, but for us it doesn't matter because we don't have AC input. That would just help if the inverters needed help for a huge load and they couldn't handle it, it could draw from the grid. Okay, we're going to go over to our charger. We've got our absorption and float voltages. Set those how you need to set them. And all the stuff you can play with, but it's set pretty well from the factory or the dealer in which you bought it from. We've got our set at an adaptive charge curve and we've got our battery safe on. So our battery BMS kind of covers the charging on this, so it's no, there's no need to click this lithium batteries on. That's with some that don't have BMSs that can communicate properly with Victron. And you see most everything I have is disconnected. We've got our AC input control. Obviously, we don't have anything on here because this is completely disabled. On this advanced for off-grid systems, it's not to be used. Right here, we've got this warning. It's not for ESS or off-grid systems. So check the manual on setting all this stuff or consult with your supplier on how to do this. And then of course we can go right over here to the manuals for these things, which are integrated in, which is very nice. And then most of these settings should populate to your other inverter if you're in split phase. And these are all populated the same way that I have the other one set. So you can see you have a lot of controllability within this program and you can download and save all of your settings for um, future upload to different inverters if you need to do that. Click over here on this ellipsis and it will tell you which version of the firmware you have and if you have the latest version or if you need to update it, so that's good. Then you can also click on the ellipsis next to the inverter. You can flash the LEDs and you can see which inverter it is. You can still manipulate and change your phases for your inverters. If you get a third inverter and you want to go three phase, you can do that down here. It says set up VE bus system. So you click on that and you need your password again. And this is where you do all of that. I'm not going to change this, but I am going to go into it and show you need to connect that MK3 and all of the inverters. It's going to show you and search for your equipment. It says two units found, which is correct. And you can see here split phase 180 degrees. You'll click on that. But I'm going to get out of this because mine are already set up. Cancel that. Discard changes. Okay. We're back at our main screen here and that's all there is. I'm going to disconnect our MK3 to USB and plug that right back into the correct port on the VE bus on the Servo GX. One last thing about the inverters before I do the load test. I was hoping for more controllability of the inverters via the Servo GX Touch. 
and I think they could program that in pretty easily. In reality, that would make things a lot easier. If there's a, maybe a big touch screen on here, something that you could use to actually program the inverters from the inverters. Let's get this load test going and see what these multi plus two, three KVA inverters can handle. I've got six KVA here to work with, and I've got a lot of big equipment here in the barn. All right, we're in the barn and I'm gonna show you the loads that we're gonna to use to push these inverters to their max. We've got this pretty big Delta 15 amp table saw. We've got our corded Milwaukee drill. This is seven and a half amps. We of course have a heat gun necessary for all load testing apparently. Every video has one, so so do I. I have some pretty powerful LED spotlights in the back. We've got our 10 inch DeWalt chop saw, which is 15 amps. We've got our 15 gallon DeWalt compressor, which is also 15 amps. We've got a ton of battery chargers for our cordless hand tools and for our cordless lawn equipment. And I'm gonna get all of these going at the same time. And then I've got this Lincoln Weldpack 100, which can output 20 amps. And then I've got an angle grinder for six amps. And then of course the well pump, which is the big one. And I believe this is a one horsepower pump. All right, friends, we're gonna start with a few small O's. We are gonna plug in our battery maintainers for our tractor and our other vehicle. Now we are going to start charging all of our batteries. Now what I'm going to do is turn on that big LED spotlight. That shouldn't draw that much, but it'll add to it. Okay, now we're gonna run our table saw and put it under load by cutting a two by four. We're gonna keep our table saw running, sorry for the noise, and we're gonna use our chop saw at the same time. While we have the table saw on, so it's done, but I'm gonna turn on our heat gun. Those are all things I'd be using at the same time. Now I'm gonna kick on the air compressor because that normally kicks on at random times depending on how you use it. So now we've got our compressor on, our table saw is not under load, but it is running. Remember, we started with the air conditioning and that is still running. Now comes the big one, friends. I'm going to turn on the well pump and see if that trips the system out. All right, well pump is on if you saw that fluctuation. Currently, we've got 15 amp compressor. We've got 15 amp table saw, though not under load. We've got a 1500 watt heat gun. I believe it's 15 or 200 or 2000 watts. I'll put that at the bottom of the screen. Ah, I tripped it. There we go. What I did was grab the chop saw and I just, not under load, I didn't cut anything. I just turned it uh, back on and look at that. I turned off the well pump and our startup, things came right back on. That's fascinating. That took about 30 seconds. The inverters kicked back on to cover the load. They started right back up again. That was awesome. I am so impressed with what those just ran. I had almost everything on, except yes, I did forget the welder, but I would never use all of those things at the exact same time. It's just not reality, right? But you know what is real? The quietness of these things. They were just put under incredible stress. And if you can hear, there's just a tiny bit of fan noise, a very quiet fan. It's unbelievable. I don't know what else to say about this system. It's just incredibly impressive to run all that stuff for my barn slash shop and for my well house. If you haven't seen any of the videos on the installation of this system, click on the link at the top of the screen. And if you're interested in any of these components, I have links to absolutely everything we used on this project in the description below the video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below the video. Now go click on this series right here, which is our installation videos for all three of our solar systems on our homestead. Have a beautiful, blessed day. See you next time. Bye.